What's up everybody? So in this video we're going to be doing some questions, some IB questions, some paper 1 questions on the topic 9.4. So this is basically everything to do with uh, flower structure, uh, seed dispersal, fertilization, pollination, germination, any of these things. Monocotyledonous plants, dicotyledonous plants, any of this, okay? So let's just get started. And as usual, try these questions by yourself first. Test yourself first because maybe you can already do it, okay? So let's get started. Which process is matched with a valid example? So the first one we're looking at here is uh, A, which is seed dispersal. And the example is a stamen explodes in the wind. So we know seeds can uh, get dispersed by various mechanisms, right? For example, going... Uh, getting stuck on the fur of an animal and getting moved by wind, anything like this, right? Many other examples. Now, this is not ex not one example. Normally, um, if we look at some examples, for example, let's take this, okay? If we look at, for example, this. This is a pea pod, right? And it can dry up a lot. And when it gets really dry, it cracks and then shoots all of the things out. And in, in that way, it can get dispersed, okay? But with... a uh, a stamen, that does not happen. A stamen does not explode. What is a stamen again? Uh, basically, a stamen is this part. If we look at the inside of a flower, so we open it up, we can see this in real life, right? And this is the stamen. This is the male part of the plant, right? Because a, a plant can have the male and the female part. Now, this is the stamen. And the stamen does not explode, okay? Not explode. And, and again, the stamen does not have a seed. So a seed cannot be dispersed, okay? It has pollen, but that's, pollen is not a seed, okay? So therefore, this one is wrong. If they said, like, a pea pod explodes in the wind, that might, that might be right. But because they say a stamen, because one, it doesn't have a seed, and two, um, it doesn't explode. A stamen doesn't explode, okay? So it's definitely not A. What about B? Fertilization. A nucleus from the pollen grain fuses with a nucleus in the ovule. This is true, okay? It's going to be B. Let me show you why. So again, we open up this flower, we look here. We know it has the male and the female part. Let's look at the female part in detail. We open, we zoom in a bit, this is what, this is what we see. We know that the male part, the anther, makes pollen, and it will transfer it to the female part, the stigma, okay, by a bee or whatever, okay? Anyways, it gets to the stigma, so here's the pollen, and we know it has DNA, right? It's the male part. It's, it has the male, male DNA. So it's going to transfer, it's going to grow a pipe down, and the DNA, these little dots, will travel down and reach the ovule, okay? This whole thing here is the ovary, but the ovule is inside here, which has the female DNA, and they will fuse, and that will create life, right? That will create a new, uh, a new plant, okay? So that's correct. That's what fertilization is, right? The process of the male and the female part meeting, okay? So it's going to be B. Why not C? Okay, the same process of fertilization. A bee carries pollen from flower to flower. This is not fertilization. This is pollination, the process of moving pollen from one flower to another, right? And a bee does that. So there, that, that's why it's not C. The process doesn't, meet, doesn't match the example. Okay, why not D then? Pollination, seeds are blown from a flower onto another one by wind. Again, this is seed dispersal, not pollination. So it's going to be B. Next one. Which flower structures are indicated by letters X and Z? Okay, so let's go look at flower structure. Things should be. Okay, here we have a flower. We can open it up, and there's many structures, right? Now, what are they asking us here? They're pointing at this part here. This part is a male part, and we call it the um, the we call it filament. Filament. The filament attaches to this one here. Okay, this part here is called what? The anther. Okay. And this is the stigma, and this whole part here is, depending what you're pointing at, they're pointing at the outer edge. The outer edge will be considered, um, let's look here. So we know Z is definitely the filament, so it's going to be A or D. We can automatically ignore B or C because the style is this one right here, okay, the female, um, female part. So it's going to be A or D. Now, the ovary is considered the whole female organ part. Whereas the ovule is the, this inside part, this inside part, okay, the, the, the part where the actual female things are. So we would consider that they're pointing at the outside, which would be the ovary. So I'd say it's D, okay, it's going to be D. So let me show you real quick here on my image, just because that's a bit confusing, that, that part. 
Um, here, O view that part that these little balls here over re. This is an important part to understand. So O view the very specific part. The ovary is the entire thing carrying all the ovules. Okay, it's kind of a good way to remember is it's over, it's covering all the ovules, it's ovary, it's over them. Okay, now next one. So that one is D, ovary and filament. Now, crazy name here chrysanthemums. Chrysan chrysanthemums, don't worry about that word. Um, all you need to know is that it's an important commercial flower, okay? As a short day plant, how can growers induce chrysanthemums to flower out of season? Okay, so what exactly is, again, those short day and long day things? Wait a second. Okay, so here we are. So, basically, we know that in a, in a leaf, there's two things, Okay. We call them, let me show you here again, we call them phytochromes, okay, phyto, phytochromes. And we call the one PR, okay, and we call the other one PFR. Now, in a uh, long day plant, it works like this. The blue arrow represents daylight. If there's a lot of daylight, then a long day plant, such as this one, the flower is a long day plant, then there will be a lot of sunlight, so a lot of the PFRs will be made. So sunlight converts PR into PFR. And then there's a short night, and, this, and the night converts the PR, PFR back into PR. So if there's, in, in, in this situation with a long day, there will be a lot of these PFRs built up, right? Because the night was short, so they couldn't be converted back into PRs. Now PFR promotes flowering in long day plants. So having all these built up, now they can flower. On the contrary, in a uh, short day plant, such as flower like this one, it's the opposite. So there's a short um, they they get stimulated by having more PRs. Okay, so they'll have a short day, so they'll create some of these, and then the long night will will convert them all back to this one, and this one stimulates flowering. Okay, so that's how they're different. Okay, that's how these two are different. Now the question is asking, and again, if you don't understand this. Better watch the video because I'm not going to explain uh, in detail now. It's just for question videos. So as a short day plant, how can growers induce this plant to flower out of season? So a short day plant, again, this means that it is this plant, meaning it wants a lot of these to be able to flower. So how can you make this kind of plant flower even if the day is long? How can you do that? You have to ensure that you, you create its environment to have long nights compared to days, okay? So that's the only way you can do it. So you have to put it in a room and make sure there's long, long dark periods and short uh, light periods. That's how you can induce this plant to flower even when the conditions outside in the real world are not matching it, okay? So, A, expose plants to short bursts of light. No, short bursts doesn't work. It needs to be continuous. And, and again, um... So that's why that one, won't, that one won't work, okay? That's pointless. Expose plants to 15 hours of continuous light. No, we want to have it have little light. The 15 hours is a lot of light. So we want, like we said, we want a long night. We want longer darkness. And then C is saying equal darkness and light. No, we don't want that. We want longer darkness. So D is saying expose plants to 15 hours of continuous darkness. So that's what we want. We want longer darkness. So it's going to be D. Okay, next one is going to be based on the same concept. So which set of conditions stimulates flowering in long day plants? So this plant, let's go back to it, long day plant. So which has a set of conditions? Having a long day and a short night, meaning a lot of PFRs. Okay, so which set of conditions stimulates flowering in long day plants? A, continuous and more than critical night length. No you want a short night length, right? Because we want a long day. So we don't want more than critical. We want less than critical. So it's going to be C or D. Okay, now high concentration of PFR or PR? PFR, right? Because with the long day plants, you create a lot of PFR, which stimulates flowering. So it's going to be C. Next one, last one for this video. 
um, a photograph shows a flowering plant. We can see that it's a flower that is flowering in sets of three. One, two, three on the first layer. One, two, three on the second layer. Anyways, which, what can be concluded from the photograph? A, this plant is monocotyledonous because the flower organs are in multiple of three. So, for answer this question, you need to be able to tell the difference between monocot and dicot. So, I have a little table here, and I made a video on this as well, of some key differences between monocot and dicot. And you can see, one of them is the monocot will flower in multiples of three, right? And we saw that our picture here is in multiples of three. So, that's why A is correct. Monocots flower in multiples of three. So, it's going to be A, but why not B? This plant is dicot because it is animal pollinated. No, that doesn't matter. Both dicot and monocot don't differ in the ways that, that they're pollinated, okay? That's not one of the differences. Like if you see the thing here, that's not one of the differences you need to know. That's one made up one. This plant is monocot because the petals are symmetrical. So again, this is not a real thing. Like it's something made up. There's no such thing as symmetrical, non-symmetrical petals. D, the plant is dicot because the eggs are within the ovary. The eggs are always within the ovary. So this is not a, not. So really, honestly, you could have just eliminated the three that sound weird. Even if you didn't know if they flower multiples of three, all B, C, and D were just made of things. They were not even related to differences between dicot and monocots. So yeah, the answer here would be A. So I'll make another question video. And again, if you don't get this, the point of these videos are not to explain in detail all the processes. First, watch my videos. And then when you do these questions, they should be fairly straightforward. I'm just trying to guide you through them. 